Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron de Rapp. John 4's five-room dungeon design concept dates back to at least 2006 and has generally been lauded as the go-to method for quickly designing a dungeon map with a solid narrative architecture. While a five-room dungeon does provide a great narrative scaffolding, the scaffolding completely omits what might be the most important part of any adventure's design. The Five Room Dungeon theorizes that five narrative touch points can be broken up into discrete encounters by the physical construction of the dungeon layout itself. As a result, each narrative touch point encompasses a dungeon room or an obviously clustered group of rooms. These narrative touch points, entrance, puzzle, setback, battle, and reward, fulfill a specific layout function and storytelling fundamental that concurrently satisfies a dungeon crawling experience as well as an adventure's narrative. Of course, to understand what the Five Room Dungeon is missing from the experience, we have to understand what it actually contains. The mnemonic, every player should be ready, is a great way to recall the elements of this design philosophy. First, the entrance encounter marks some kind of environmental shift, possibly including a dungeon guardian. The following puzzle encounter offers an environmental or roleplay problem for the players to tangle with, ideally in a way that will make them think about the game world as much as they do their character. Character sheet. The setback is a bait and switch or red herring designed to trick the players into thinking they've accomplished something important when in fact they've only walked into a narrative or literal pitfall. The battle or boss fight of the dungeon is exactly like what it sounds and serves to be the climactic combat encounter likely protecting the final reward. This final reward encounter serves to tie the whole adventure together, as well as grant various treasures, boons, and quest MacGuffins the party began the delve looking for. Further, these five encounters don't have to be a linear railroad either. Room layouts, if thought of as a flowchart, can be arranged in variations called the rooster, the cross, the flying V, the decision, and the wrong way, as well as many others. With that said, cheekily rearranging the order the players may interact with these encounters seems like a clever feature of the five room dungeon concept, but it also proves that it only encapsulates two thirds of a different storytelling tool, the three act structure. The three-act structure is a storytelling trope that breaks the story into digestible chunks across a timeline. First, Act 1 introduces a status quo where any necessary realities of the story are established and sets up the story's central tension. Once that central tension is established, an inciting incident kicks the story into Act 2. In Act 2, the characters work to solve the issue at hand and run into a surprising problem, plot twist, or setback. This plot twist recontextualizes the story's central issue and sets up a more fulfilling climax to kick off Act 3. Once in Act 3, the climax resolves by characters leaning in to their newfound context gained from the plot twist in Act 2. The story then capstones by establishing a new status quo by illustrating how the characters and the world around them have been irrevocably changed. Laying these two tropes elements side by side, that is, the five room dungeon and the three-act structure, we demonstrate what is missing from the five-room dungeon. But we can fix that. Before we discuss solutions for the five-room dungeon shortcomings, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Describe. Isn't that the website that has block text as a service? Don't you have a whole video bashing that stuff? Well, yeah, if you use Describe just for that. But you can use it instead for lots of other stuff, like when the party suddenly takes interest in a throwaway NPC you didn't plan a description for, or to quickly grab a graveyard map chock full of headstone descriptions you'd rather not burn your improvisational juices on. Check out the link in the description and use the coupon code BARON when you sign up to get 10% off. Now back to the video. So what are we missing from the three-act structure that would improve the five-room dungeon? And why specifically do we need those things? Firstly, Act 1's setup phase is extremely important for the payoff in the plot twist of Act 2. It's in this setup that the storyteller establishes the status quo and provides information we need to fully appreciate Act 2's plot twist. Failure to execute this setup early on due to a lack of foreshadowing makes the story feel uncomfortable because there is no clear justification 
for a plot twist to take place. An easy example of this setup is young Luke Skywalker being told at the beginning of A New Hope that Darth Vader killed his father, only for Luke to find out that Vader is his father in The Empire Strikes Back. If the groundwork for this plot twist hadn't been established early on, the scene on Bespin's Cloud City would have been a storytelling disaster. In our D&D games, then, we should take time to think about what the central tension of our story is and why the players would go to the Five Room Dungeon to start with. What could we foreshadow about the setback or puzzle encounters even before the players know what the quest hook is? As an example, players could stroll into town during a festival celebration where villagers are burning the effigy of a dead, hated king. They do this superstitiously to keep the harsh winter at bay. The burning effigy is extinguished by a gust of freezing wind, followed by goblins raiding the town festival and stealing whatever supplies and food they can carry. The king effigy, the super Superstition and the cold gust of wind are all the status quo setup. The goblin attack serves as the inciting incident that kicks off Act 2. The payoff of this festival roleplay before the goblin raider quest hook is even established happens when the players tail the goblins back to their lair, a repurposed underground crypt. The crypt's entrance obviously marks the beginning of a typical five-room dungeon where the crawling experience plays out as usual. When delving the tomb, however, the party constantly has their torches extinguished by more and more frequent cold gusts of wind, they discover the much-hated king's sarcophagus is empty, and learn that the freezing, emaciated goblins are more terrified of a kingly ice troll than they are of the players. The final battle isn't with the goblins, then, because they become part of the dungeon's puzzle encounter. Meanwhile, the setback encounter tricks the players into believing they're about to get a bunch of royal treasure buried with the hated king, only to find out that the hated king is not dead and is wandering around somewhere. Because we have already established all of these narrative threads before the quest hook was even introduced, the final battle with the terrifying ice troll king, perhaps even with the goblin's help, has far more impact and payoff. By honoring Act 1's setup and inciting incident elements, players will feel extremely clever for putting together all these plot threads seemingly on their own, and you'll have created a masterful story despite the Five Room Dungeon's shortcomings. If you'd like to help me make more content like this in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.